About 25 years ago, most of us got our first cell phones. And uh, if we could bring all the cell phones we have had since to this room, we would be able to create a huge pile here. And uh, I guess that one of the most common models there would be the Nokia 3310. One of the creators behind that phone is here today, Tapani. He's also, today he's active at Fraunhofer Institute, and he has also a, a very important role when it comes to eco design. I think I'll leave the floor to you and you can present yourself, and you're very, very welcome to us. Thank you. Could you hear me? Yeah. Thanks, Hans. Uh, kind words. Okay, yeah. My name is Tapani Jokinen, and uh, I'm a design consulting in Fraunhofer Institute. Uh, try to apply the design dis discipline in the, the research center in Europe. Uh, the, the other work that I'm doing also, I'm part of the Finnish startup called Circular Devices, and we are doing most sustainable modular smartphone into the market uh, called Puzzle Phone. Uh, I'm a chief design officer in there, and then some other projects. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I have worked now about a year on eco design circle and especially a learning factory part of it that I will tell you today and I will share some some of insight and my experiences in design and in sustainability side okay let's go so every great design begins with the story the essence of design is storytelling and today's brand, product, services, it's not about any more companies, brands, to tell their stories. It's more about interaction with the users and especially what kind of stories those people are telling about your, your product, your design, your service and things like that. So my story in here, these are the some of the, the uh, projects that I have done. Uh, and it was 2007. Uh, I was invited to Oslo to give a keynote speak. As a young designer, I was really excited and, and sharing my, my success story in, in different area. 3310, we have sold that 126 million pieces and Nokia 1100, 230 million pieces sold and, and all that. Uh, and I was pretty okay after my speak, even I lost my notes and it was a bit, a bit messy speak. The next speaker who stepped up in the, the States was Anna, Dr. Anna Galloway, assistant professor from SDSE, School of Design in, in Victoria University. And she started her presentation showing a beautiful, beautiful image from India countryside where big mountains and, and beautiful, beautiful image and I was, yeah, cool. She have just made a, a trip to India. The next image was zoom in on that mountain. And it was, like Hans said, it was a pile of used obsolescent uh, smartphones. And I could even recognize some of the models in there. And you know, I was, oh my God, oh my God. This is embarrassing then and, and so on. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I think that that was a certain type of eye-opening moment in my life. A real tipping point that the great success means even greater responsibility, what you are doing and how you are doing stuff. Of course, as a Nordic Scandinavian designers, 
in your backbone, certain sustainability is inbuilt, how we use materials, how we economy of expression, economy of, of use of, of resources and, and all that, but still we have to go much further from there. Okay, so about the learning factory for eco-design. So it, it's part of the um, eco-design circle, as, as Anna told. And our part on here is to, to build the workshops of, of uh, creating a new methods, tools, how to eco-design. We made a, a pretty large survey which fit also on, on what are the expectations, what are the, the caps, today's startups, SMEs and, and others. And actually the know-how start to be in there. The biggest problem that we were facing and heard that it's actually the how to start, what are the practical you know, methods, how I could enter in there, how I could change my company more towards sustainability and circular economy. So, this is basically what we are looking in there, who are participating on our workshop, motivated beginners. And why motivated beginners? Because we want to maximize the impact on here. When, when we open the new workshop, usually the first one who want to participate are usually sustainability, circular economy consults, or the academy professor who is already teaching that. But, but we have selecting more those kind of academies who don't have yet a circularity in, in, in their uh, teaching programs or uh, companies who haven't been too far in there to, to really get that. So it's... it's, it's uh, it's workshop, we have collaborate with Sweet, really great Daniela, Anna and, and all the others, uh, making the, the online tools in there, then the workshop and basically we have the full toolkit for, for uh, master class, uh, uni university lecture if needed on, on the whole topic. Sometimes we have to see the things from the fiction side to understand a little bit more about our own life in this planet Earth. Um, in Pandora, sustainability is embedded in, 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 in here. Everything is interconnected. It's have a nerve system. It's, it's a bioneutrical network that uh, all the living species are connected on that. And now I, I, I was thinking to make a one exercise with you. So hold your breath on five seconds. If it would be longer, I, I could get a lawsuit. But anyway, five seconds, let's, let's hold our breath. Okay, so what just happened? You interface actually the planet Earth because you, you hold your breath and, and you, you create a carbon dioxide that plants are using for photosynthesis. So think about it. Even when we are breathing, we are connected on this planet. I think that it's, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, beautiful, beautiful, magical blue planet. I met Candy Coleman, former astronaut, NASA astronaut, in uh, last summer in uh, Circular Economy World Conference in Helsinki. And she gave her speak in there. She spent uh, months in a space station, so yes. And this was one of her uh, favorite place, looking at that magical blue planet in there. And one of the, the insight and founding for her was that 
that actually, when you look at that, that is the closed ecosystem, the planet. And she has gone through years and years training to survive in the space. And what is the most sustainable design that humankind have ever made? It's actually a spaceship. You have to recycle everything. You, you, you have to, to keep all the waste minimum and, and, and so on. But anyway, this closed ecosystem, what we have in, in this planet, actually, if you're thinking on that kind of that, actually the planet Earth is the spaceship. And all of you are cosmonauts, astronauts. And how much in school or wherever you have get education or manuals, how to treat, how to, 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 to be in balance on how you consume, how you are living in this planet. Almost none. So maybe we, we have to make something in here. And then when we look at the nature, there is no such a thing that waste. Nothing is waste, everything is recycled. Waste is man-made actually. So when something died, it, it's a beginning on something new that use actually that materials for, for growing. So I would say that sustainability is the world's greatest design challenge. And unfortunately there is no planet B. Even now we try to get into Mars, but that is not the planet Earth like we have. Okay, what and how eco-design and the strategic view of it. This is in a nutshell how we defined the eco-design <coughs> in, in this project. So eco-design is chance to promote ecological innovation. Eco-designing a product or service means to make it desirable for people, minimize its environmental impact and maximize its use and business impact along life cycle by designing a circular system around it. Yeah, it sounds really simple but, but really complicated because it, it, it really means system level thinking and design. And what I want to, as a designer, emphasize is this desirable part that eco-design is not just something that you will add as a stamp or, or like a sticker in, in your product. It has to go much deeper and I will show some samples later on on that. The first week when I start the project, I'm a visual person, so I start with Google images, put all the keywords, eco design, circular design, uh, you name it. And what I get out was this on, on your side, left side. A little bit dusty, dirty, but anyway, good stuff. Uh, taking the old Coca-Cola bottle and try to innovate something out of it. Building, building lamps, uh, JLX and, and, and so on. But anyway, how I see the eco design, circular design today, tomorrow, is, is really our task to, to make sustainability beautiful and it, it should be so embedded that you don't even have to mention that for the customers. That that is the, the key principles when we create the products. And it's totally possible. Okay. Um, most of you are familiar on this design thinking, how IDEO and Stanford University have, have made it. And... Uh, always talking about people, business, technology, and innovation should be in the middle. So if it satisfies all those three attributes, you are able to create something good, usually. But I think that we have to look at much broad way that actually uh, getting this outer circle that is, is uh, 
the planet, environmental sustainability, social, economic, political, social responsibility on there. And that should actually be also involved when you, when you look at the people, desirability, business viability or technology feasibility side. Always, always looking also what is the impact for, for environment. So people, planet, business and in the middle. So you always have to find this balance. And especially from design methods, design thinking, understand better what people want, what people need. So you could reduce some features, some unnecessary things in, in a product when you know better what they want and, and according that to designing the things. And then you look at the, the planet, what kind of resources, uh, materials you are using. And of course, there would be circular products, circular economy without business and profit. If you, if you, if you do new stuff and you can't get it profitable, you can't survive, unfortunately. So finding the balance in here. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar on echovation funneling, how framing and filtering the echo ideas. If we have any of the management board members here in audience or CEOs, it's always those three things that you have to ask from your research, innovation, designers, uh, development side, that, okay, is there a desirability? Is, is there a need for that kind of product? Always. Other is the feasibility. Feasibility is more in the technical side. What is the technical maturity? Uh, what is the cost? Uh, what are the risks? What kind of competencies we have in our company? Uh, what kind of caps? Is there a certain future potential in a portfolio level in there? So giving answers on that. And then, of course, viability, more in a business side. How this will affect, is, is this matching our current strategy in a company and our brand? Will this affect somehow in our future strategy? What will be the business impact? Uh, what kind of business models we have? Will this support our business model or do we have to change that? What is it going to do our sales and marketing and overall portfolio? But then the horizontal arrow, what I have in there, environmental things. We have to check that all the time with those verticals at the same time. Okay. Why sustainability? Why sustainability? Because if it's good for people and planet, it's definitely going to be better business. And we have these human, ecological and industrial systems that it has to satisfy also. Making more of less. And actually, what I put there, the ultimate goal today's design is, is not about making a minimum viable products, it's actually creating a minimum harmful products and best possible products. And if you look at the Lean Eco Design uh, circle in here, the wheel, and you really start to think about it, how to work, what is the mindset when you are developing something new. If you are actually optimizing everything, on beginning, that you take care of the materials. You are developing certain type of technologies, materials, assets that are more friendly for, for environment. If you optimize production as simply lines, all that, 
or industrial symbiosis that actually you use others' waste to produce something great out of it. Optimizing the lifetime durability, the product itself, building the upgradability in there, repairability and so on. Then optimizing the distribution, reduce the packaging. Do you really need the secondary package? Do you really need a sales package, a separate than delivery package and so on? So could you combine and reduce those? Optimize the business strategy, models, sales and marketing and not greenwashing. And that is hard, really hard sometimes. So you have to be really transparent how you have built the things and what you have used in there. And then maybe the, one of the most important for designers is definitely optimize the use, service life, second life and so on. How you extend the lifetime of the product that it will not be obsolete. And then the last one, optimize the product disposal and recyclability that there will not be landfilling, that there is a other use for those what we could recover on those. This is a simple slide, that's why I like it. So strategic towards sustainability. If three th things that you have to remember when you start to designing something and thinking of something, Sufficiency, less is more. Efficiency, make it better. Consistency, make it different. I mean, <coughs> simple rules. And then, four loops and how to close the loops. And this actually shows really well why extended lifetime, why you should create products that will last longer. Because as long the product is valuable for the end user, it also have a value. And also when, when you have as a closer and smaller the loop is, as more profitable it is. Logistic uh, chains and others that you are not bringing the materials components all over the world, that getting more local resources in there. And you are taking care of, of all the step in here. The other good example is that many of my friends always ask, so Tapani, um, I had a problem that I have to get the new phone or I have to get the new laptop. And puzzle phone is not in the market yet, so what should we use? But what is the most ecological, sustainable choice in the market at the moment? What, what is your recommendation on it? The answer is really simple and I always say the same. Actually the most sustainable phone or most sustainable laptop is actually what you have at the moment. Is there any way to upgrade that, to fix that and keep it alive? Because all the energy and materials, resources is already used in there. The other thing in, in Scandinavia, all the governments want to get out from the old cars because they are poisoning, they are not efficient, using lots of fuel and so on. And still, why there are no companies, startups or anyone who actually use today's technology to change the old car into the modern that uh, are more powerful, consuming less, polluting less, and so on, because we have all that technology. But no, that is not the option at the moment. Okay, here is the one, one tool that we developed, the domino effect canvas. So when you go through these steps, always when you are designing something, first use, second use, third use, uh, how about the, the remanufacturing, and then recycled. But you have to take care of all the steps and touch points on beginning when you start your design. So it, it, it really requires new way of, of working and thinking. And you are familiar on here. Um, 
So the circular economy, circular design is all about closing those loops and extending the lifetime and the value what, what you have created. And when you look at the top linear side, I mean, this is, this is take, make, waste. Really logical. You take the materials, putting those in, in a factory, producing a product, shipping that to user, and use it, and then go and buy a new one and forget the old one. So, a typical, that's why those loops, how you could keep it alive. And uh, eco design life cycle stage wheel. So, you should really focus on all the life, life cycles that, that we have and how you could actually maximize the value in there. This is the canvas what we are using in, in our workshop that in a one big picture you could ideate or you could prototype in a system level how it actually works with the certain filters, more in a physical side, the product design, hardware, then more digital service design point of view, and then business point of view, and of course the partners, how I could collaborate with others and environmental impact also, that you could all as sam sample in, 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 in a one picture. Really helpful tool. And sustainability guide will have all these tools later on. Uh, my background is, is design and design thinking, so this is the, this is the re bird version of uh, double diamond British Design Council things in Fraunhofer. Everybody says that, yeah, Tapanian is his bikini image again, that uh, on, 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 on the first diamond you have to understand, discover, understand the problem that you are designing the right things, right type of things, and defining that. And then before what we designers love, create, ideate, jumping in a development stage, iterating, uh, and in the end making delivery that you are designing the right things in here. So combining, combining uh, the best principle of design process and life cycle thinking. This is pretty provocative things and this definitely doesn't have any kind of academic background in here, but in visually it shows that, that actually things are moving and if we are taking the, the Ries uh, Lean Startup method that going through basically the design process, but then really learn from the user before the building something and then measure, iterate and do it again and do it again and taking all the life cycle stages account when you are designing this. So, what I'm saying that eco-design means significant shift from product design to system design. And you have seen those, those uh, design steps that First, there were no design at all in the companies. Then finally, they start to, to hire or they had in-house designers. Then next step was, was more about design management and brand management and all that area. And then design thinking, strategic design came in there. But I think that we have to speed up our game and, and moving more towards that system design, the circular thinking area. A good sample, I'm a big fan, my big hero, Eero Saarinen and Eliel Saarinen, and this was maybe the, the biggest learnings that Eliel gave to his son, that the system design, the contextual design. So if, if somebody asks you to design a chair, the first question from your side is, is that where it, where it goes, chair in the room, room in the house, house in the environment, an in environmental 
uh, in a city plan and so on. So always looking those. And the first question is actually from us as a designer is that do people want a chair? Is that necessary actually? Or is that something else that they are looking? This shows really, really badly our designers' world. We are shadowing and, and making the biggest amount of, of waste. So I would say that there is definitely misuse of creativity today and we have to change that. Designers are at the involvement that you could see that product design, strategic design, there is always that you have to create the assets before the, the product development could start. But the system design, eco designers is a huge difference in, in, in a way companies are working that you have to stay with the project and engage people together to collaborate and actually make those things happen. How much? No. Uh, Maybe a minute. Okay. One minute. One minute. Okay. I will jump this that this is just the journey that every company do. This is actually really important. Every big corporation have this this structure, organizational structures, you are heading the department of this and that, and that creates silos. And you, in, in circular economy, you can't work in silos. You have to solve problems in a multidisciplinary, uh, cross-functional way. So actually, uh, it's more about this nerve system type of thing, the network system that you have to have, and not only in a project level, in a company level. So that's why it's, it, it's big. So we have to remember that it's important to think about out of the box, but remember all of you are actually in a box. So how do, to get that information, knowledge, and change your box, your company, your organization, your area, Okay, so we can design our way out of linear system into the circular systems. Thank you, Taxo Mykke. Thank you very much. <laughs> One more strong voice for uh, getting out of our silos and working together. Exactly. Uh, that's one of the main themes for, for, for this day. We have, we have the time for a few brief questions. One there. I think there's a mic coming. Hi, uh, Tabel. Uh, I got a question about uh, most of the people here. We totally understand this, and we are moving forward. And usually, it's companies or organizations, etc., that works with this or are close to it because we're close to the user. Uh, but what I'm thinking of, you had a picture of different kinds of products. Uh, it was a vacuum clean from Electlux that you had like products in the future, a black one. Mm. Uh, I know that's a particular problem with that because then there are the companies that deliver the plastics and they cannot uh, uh, cope with the demand that for instance, like Lux or the user want to have as a material in the vacuum cleaner in itself. Mm. So what do you say about these kind of uh, uh, production facilities, material facilities, that sector of the industry, uh, how they are working, how they are moving forward and how to move them forward? Mm. Excellent question. Uh, recycling, recycling the materials is, is not the the end solution, not at all. So if, if, if you, for example, using recycled materials, plastic and so on, what is your motivation? If the demand of your product is, is getting higher and higher, to get more of that. So, um, and this, so for example, when they create the they carpets, office carpets, you know, what if they don't get enough carpets to produce those? So I think that the, I, I believe science, researchers, we should just continue and develop new materials that are better, that, that we could create in a mass market level on those. 
the ocean plastic is the other thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great initiative. But why they are flying from Bangkok, Taiwan, other areas, cleaning the oceans in there, the US or some other countries to build Snickers for Adidas? Why don't they, they collect that in locally, in Florida, in there? It's so expensive. So I think that this local aspect is also important. Hopefully this gives a certain type of answer. We have one more very brief question. No one? Okay, then wow. we're done. Just like thank in you Finland. very just much. Like uh, in Finland. We'll, we'll give him a, him a beer, oh. of course. Yeah, thank and you. And also, here's uh, some kind of a co-design. We have decided here that uh, this is a gift. We will give uh, a small gift for uh, microfinancing in Uganda. Oh, yeah. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Great.